Hi y'all, I'm Nina from Need More Time and welcome to my kitchen today. Today I want to share with you another favorite of my family's. It is called a Creamy Toscana Gnocchi. Uh, it's by monkeyandmekitchenadventures.com. I love their site. They do all plant-based foods that are healthy, no oil. They're actually all gluten-free recipes for anyone that has a gluten sensitivity. So check out their website. Uh, the link to this recipe will be in the description below. One of the reasons I love gnocchi as a meal is because it's super quick to boil. So unlike pasta, which normally takes 10 to 13 minutes or so, gnocchi actually boils in just two to three minutes. So it's super quick to put together. It's basically just what sauce you wanna make. You could always just boil up some gnocchi and just put literally a, a jar of, of already made marinara sauce on it, done, you've got a meal ready for your kids super quick. But today I wanna to share with you this specific meal because the sauce is amazing and it's still a meal that you could get on the table in under 30 minutes and super worth it. So first of all, to get started, um, I've, I've got all, my, all the ingredients prepped. We're going to um, boil our water here for the gnocchi. And while that's getting ready, we're gonna go ahead and saute some onions. The link in the description is for four to five servings. I'm actually doubling it for my family so that we have plenty for the meal as well as a few leftovers. I typically like doubling all my meals. So if this seems like too much for you, just follow the, de the description in the link and you won't have as much. Anyway, for, so to get started, we're gonna put two medium onions in our pan. Our water I'm gonna go ahead and get the gnocchi boiled and ready to go so I'm gonna do two packages these are just traditional potato gnocchi made with white flour if you do have a gluten sensitivity go ahead and buy gluten free gnocchi If your store sells uh, whole wheat, ones made with uh, whole wheat flour, then I would recommend those over white flour, definitely healthier. Um, I couldn't find any the day I went to the store, so I just bought the regular ones. They're ready as soon as they start floating to the top of your water, so I'm just going to keep an eye on that. All right, now I did not add any oil to my onions. I like to cook oil free to keep my meals as low fat as possible. That's definitely healthier for your heart, healthier for your waistline. As you can see, the edges of my, my onions are beginning to brown here. So what I'm gonna, and which is just the natural sugars and the onions caramelizing. So now what I'm gonna do is just literally add about a tablespoon of water and that's gonna get this nice brown juice basically coming out of the onions and deglazing my pan here. So nothing is sticking. The myth that you have to cook with oil to make sure your food doesn't stick is, is all that, a myth. You can literally use a splash of water or veggie broth and keep your veggies from sticking. So it'll still be tasty though. This caramelization occurs without the oil and brings out the flavor in your onions. Then I'm going to go ahead and add two tablespoons of minced garlic. You can certainly use fresh garlic that you press. I actually don't ever buy fresh garlic. I just, I use it so often and it's just so super quick and easy to pull it out of the fridge already minced up. So that's how I do it. Now you just want to spread that around for about 30 seconds just to get 
the aroma going from your garlic. Smells really good already. All right. There we go. All right, I think my gnocchi is just about done here. Going, going to go ahead and drain that. All right, so I've drained our gnocchi, coming back to our sauce here. Now I'm gonna add two tablespoons of flour. You can use any flour that you, would, that you choose. I actually use this garbanzo bean flour Anytime I'm making a savory dish that calls for flour, the flour is basically a thickener. Um, this is just literally dried garbanzo beans and um, ground up into a flour. You know, a lot healthier than just say using all purpose flour. And it also has a little bit of, it also gives the food a little bit of, you know, extra flavor. So I keep that in the fridge and use it quite regularly. So you add that, then you're also gonna add two tablespoons of tomato paste. One little trick I like to share about tomato paste, you know, you buy them in these little cans here, what are they, six ounces, and usually you, you come across a recipe, right, and it calls for one or two tablespoons, and you're like, great, now what I'm gonna do with the rest of the can, you put it in the fridge, and more than likely in a week or two, you end up throwing it out, right? So if that happens to you, you'll have to open up a fresh can. What I suggest is with the remaining tomato paste that's in the can, dump it out in one tablespoon portions onto a plate. Put parchment paper on the plate first, then little dollops, one tablespoon each. Put it in the freezer till they freeze completely and then dump them all into a bag and keep it in your freezer. And then when you have a recipe that calls for one or two tablespoons, you can just grab those little dollops out of the freezer and throw them in your dish. And then that way you never waste any tomato paste again. So that's a little trick there I wanted to share with you. All right, back to the sauce. The other thing we're gonna do is add a bunch of spices that are called for in the recipe. I'm not gonna go ahead and uh, call all those out right now. Just look at them in the description, but it's basically garlic powder, onion powder. There's some rosemary and thyme, as well as some bay leaves. Um, the only, since I'm doubling this recipe, the only spice that I'm not doubling is the salt, because I like to try and keep the recipes as low sodium as possible. And it's always, you can always add a little extra salt, you know, afterwards. Uh, when you're finished your dish if you think it needs a little extra, but most of the time honestly I think it tastes just fine without it. So Rather uh, keep it the sodium down if possible All right, so we've got that going there Now we're gonna add some veggie broth two cups of veggie broth This is the veggie broth powder that I buy off Amazon it is really healthy, low sodium, all real ingredients. I have, I'll put a link to it in the description. Highly recommend this stuff. Um, so check it out. There's no oil added to it. Um, it's really flavorful too. Then we're gonna add two cups of water. There, get that going. Stuff off the bottom there. Oh, almost forgot. I need my my tomato sauce. 16 ounces of tomato sauce. I actually didn't have any just plain tomato sauce in the cupboard today, so all I did was took a can of diced tomatoes and threw it in my blender. Done. I buy the no salt added diced tomatoes and I always have a, a big stock of that. So put that in there. Then you're gonna put two tablespoons of low sodium soy sauce. If you need it to be soy free, just use tamari or coconut 
aminos is also a good one. Coconut aminos is naturally super low in sodium, so that's good to use if you are on a low sodium diet, which honestly we all should be, right? And then also this is 12 sun-dried tomato halves that I've diced up. We're gonna add that. Sun-dried tomatoes make any Italian dish super flavorful. The sun-dried tomatoes I suggest you buy are the kind in a bag like this um, so that they are not, not in oil. These you can usually find somewhere in your, near your, pro, in your produce section somewhere. I got these at Publix. I waited till they, I saw they were on uh, buy one, get one free and I buy a whole bunch of them, keep them in the pantry. When you do open up a bag though, keep the open bag in your refrigerator. Um, but they can stay in the pantry as long as you haven't opened them yet. So that, there's our sun-dried tomatoes. Then we're also going to add one cup of non-dairy milk. I'm using soy milk. I like using soy milk for a few reasons. The flavor I just love. It, as long as you have unsweetened soy milk, it works for both baking or anything savory. It's also a little creamier than say almond milk, which tends to be pretty thin unless you've made it homemade. And then I'm also gonna put two tablespoons of miso. Miso is a great addition to recipes uh, because it's, uh, of course, it's flavorful. It's um, also lower in sodium, so more healthy than just using straight up salt. So if you haven't used miso, I highly recommend it. You might not be able to find it in your local store, but you can certainly order it off Amazon, which, which is where I get it. Now we're gonna increase the heat to boil, get it boiling. Whole Foods does sell miso. I have bought it actually there before, so if you live near Whole Foods, I know you'll find it there. So I'm just gonna get this going here, stir it around. All right, so our sauce has now simmered for five minutes. So you can go ahead and turn it down, turn it way down, just on to low. All right, we've already boiled our gnocchi earlier. I'm gonna go ahead and add that. Just be careful, hopefully not to splash it. Splash yourself. Then we're gonna add um, I, I basically chopped up here four big handfuls of spinach. The recipe calls for kale. Uh, to be honest, I haven't played around too much with kale, even though it seems to be the latest fad superfood. Uh, I only like it if it's massaged, and I just don't feel like doing that. So <laughs> I stick with spinach. But if you are a kale fan, by all means, go ahead and use kale. Just put that in there. And you know what? If your family doesn't like, if your kids don't like greens, you know, feel free to leave them out. Put them in a salad. Put greens in a salad instead if that's how your family likes getting their greens. It doesn't really matter how you get them. Just try and fit them in to your, to at least one meal a day. And then lastly, I'm going to put in, right here, we're, since we're doubling this, I'm putting in six cups of beans. These are already cooked. Um, it's here is, I think I've, I only had one, um, one and a half cups of chickpeas. So the rest I'm using white beans. You could do a combination of the two or just one. And of course, you know, this is your meal. So if you don't want that many beans, just maybe put a little bit in, or again, if you, you could even leave them out, you know, this is a pretty easy meal to be flexible with but I like adding the beans. It really makes it just a complete one pot meal here. 
covers all our bases. So how yummy does that look? All right, we're just gonna plate this now. Just get a soup ladle. Go ahead and put some in a bowl, like so. I love putting on some of this uh, vegan Parmesan, as I call it. It's actually made with almond meal and a little lemon juice and seasonings, and then you just bake it in the oven on parchment paper. I'm at, I'll put a link to the recipe in the description because it's super yummy to put on any pasta dish. And then if you like a little bit of kick, I like adding some crushed red pepper. Like so. And there you have it. Creamy Toscana gnocchi. Thank y'all for joining me today again on Need More Time. I hope you enjoyed and got something out of today's recipe. And I look forward to sharing more of my family's favorite recipes with you. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any future recipes. See you next time.